Hey everyone, welcome to Shibumi Boat Build, our YouTube channel. Yesterday we put in the engine. I'm going to pan around and I'm going to talk to you guys. So excuse me when I flip the lens. So engine went in yesterday. Went in. It was tough. You saw it going in, but it did go in. No damage. Uh, the bottom step here had the this piece. I'll point at it. This piece was here. It's on the floor behind me. Went down there. It was literally just held on with a couple of tacks. Uh, while the lads were trying to pull it in, someone grabbed it, I think it was Dara, and it came off in his hand, but that's okay. They'll be all changed anyway. Uh, man, I noticed something there, I just skidded over. Look what I see. So today, for the first time ever, I've actually looked at the stern tube, and seals, shaft end bearings, the waterproof bearings, the one to cool the shaft, and between here, the gearbox, and that shaft, uh, which will have to be shortened by about 300 millimeters, but we knew that, because in design of the beds that the engine is currently sitting on, I had moved the engine back in the boat, which gave me a nose-up angle, which allowed me to put in a bigger water tank. So we will be cutting that back, because remember there's a gearbox there, but there's also a whole constant velocity joint to go in as well which is actually in the truck ready to get sorted out we've been looking through it myself and david and we figured it all out we have the manuals we kept everything there is a small bit of corrosion on it just the usual from sitting there for years and brush that off and we'd have all new parts and there's a bigger surprise outside so what else happened there it is the water tank is in it just fits between the door as per the design uh, it sits just about on the edge of that ledge. I'm actually going to, the, that frame there, the one I'm just moving the camera along, uh, is going to get slightly widened and there's going to be angle irons running. If I use the center of the screen there, up and down along the sides there. But essentially, it's fitting perfect. You can see by the lines within how it's sitting there. And we sustained a tiny bit of damage on the side, you can't see it, there's a tiny little scratch there that we're actually just going to get TIG welded. And also, in there, the little bottom, it's a drain that we're not going to use for taking water out of it, but purely just for emptying it if we have to. Um, we damage that as well, so we'll be cutting that off and replacing it. But that's not a problem, we have the plate tops for there. It's sitting perfectly into the frame of the boat. It's sitting across three frames, and it will have steel work to bolt down on rubber sheeting. So, absolutely thrilled with that. Huge move forward. Now, I'll be making new parts for that to sit on, and then we will lift it, block and tackle. Uh, we will lift it off two of those, rise it up, continue the painting, sort all the bits out underneath, get it all finished underneath. There's a hose to go in for an emergency bilge pump and a few bits and pieces and then I can drop the tank back in properly and uh, weld it in. But until I knew exactly how to sit, I designed that tank 12 or 13 years ago, 12 years ago, and it never ever came into the boat. It was only ever done off the drawings. It was built here in Eurofab in Dungarvan, laser cut in Dublin, and there it is fitting 100%, uh, resting equally on all three beams so that the design works. And that tank can hold 1200 litres of water, give or take a pint. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to get out of the boat and show you something even cooler. How's about that? 
there it is. It's only offered in there. There's nothing really bolted down or anything. The prop is only hand tight. But there it is, our four blade 24 inch prop. Uh, the end cap on it. The stern tube is in, shaft is in, and that's the uh, end of the bearing for the outer stern tube. And I've had to clean the inside of that. That's had 10 years of water running out of it. Now it is high carbon steel, so it doesn't really rust. But there was rust in there. And uh, I had to make a wire brush, believe it or not. And this is one end of it, which I just, you can see a bit of 12 mil. Welded it on. A couple of dots, because I can cut that and save it. And 2.4 meters later, I did have to attach the chisel that I used to uh, scrape out the boat, knock the, any of the pitting, the rust off it, cut that off, welded that on there and of course this big SDS drill which was needed. We spun that up and down, we took a whole load of dust out of it and the inside of that tube is now completely clean. Now that will remain dry, we'll actually be putting in probably a drop of oil down in there, but that will remain dry and the, the stern tube is in its own enclosure, a fiberglass enclosure. It's a completely uh, sealed system and it's made by AcroDrive and it's a wet bearing which means that ahead of just where it comes through in the other side of the bulkhead inside there will be a water uh, injection point from the engine that will feed water uh, down into that shaft so how cool is that so this uh, truck is like a bomb hitted gearbox there I've just polished the end of it now what's on the end of that is the start of an AcroDrive CV system a constant velocity system and this is the adapter that meets the gearbox flange to the start of the CV which is right there. So think of your uh, front wheel drive car. This is completely movable as is the other side. It's quite weight. And that will sit between the end of the shaft and uh, the engine. Which means the engine doesn't have to be lined up at all but we're going to line it up as absolute we, best we can and give this guy here uh, as little work to do. So then this is a carrier bearing that sits between the gearbox and then the uh, CV joint and that's going to have to be bolted to a huge big chunk of steel as you can see there and the shaft will actually go into that and that's what grips the shaft. So shaft will sit on that guy and then he gets trapped inside it with uh, another mad bearing looking yoke which I can't see but that's neither here nor there you'll see it in due course and then at the very end and the inside of the actual tube itself we have these two boys separate so this will be into the tube itself and that makes the seal it's the exact same system that compresses shaft will run up through that this will grip the fiberglass on the inside and this will just snugly uh, live on the inside of the tube and then onto that bolts this guy which takes in the water to cool the shaft so all sitting there with years and years and years we have all the manuals in multiple languages there's a little bit of plumbing to do on that there's a like what you'd have on your boiler, there's a little air bleed system where it automatically takes out air if there is any in it so that there is constant water that it can't airlock and it'll be plumbed into the far side of the water pump before it gets to the engine uh, for the boat and it uses not it doesn't use too much but it, it, it will all work so that's us for now that's the propeller nut that we have uh, with our kit which we done yesterday and out of the, the bit of steel that we used to lift the boat, to lift the engine, uh, which we bent actually because we pulled across it, uh, I've, I've uh, plasma cut this out. And I'm starting to sand it down. It's going to live on the boat and it's going to fit. I've just roughly marked our shaft. That slot, it's just going to be a special spanner just for the prop. It'll live on the boat and uh, it's just using the materials we have. I don't want to be putting some big ugly AJ on it or a big pipe wrench or something on it. I want something to be nice and smooth. 
been a few days since we've actually managed to get anything done. I'm trying to get the stern gear in, the gearbox has to go in. It's too heavy for us to lift. So today Dara and his friends are going to, we have a plan. We're going to put a rolling beam, a T-section aluminium beam onto aluminium truss that we use in our work up here and beef all that out and cross brace it and at the end of it we should have a block and tackleable place and we shift everything here and make this the loading area and it just means when welders and gearboxes and sheets of timber and all the bits that will need to go into it in due course that this will be there now for the next year to load the like even getting a, a lorry battery into this thing would be uh, means has to go up here so it's not right so we're actually going to put in a lifting system now that can stay here for the duration of the build so uh, we're lads are going to do that so I just said I'd do a before picture now and uh, when the lads have it done I'll show you what they've done You have to pull up the chain now. Tiny bit more up, David. That's loads, loads. Okay, David, a tiny bit of pressure up the way then. Stop, stop. Yeah, she's home with that. So today I'm going to build a, a structure over the engine bay in the engine bay essentially to use two one ton chain blocks to lift and position the engine. This is going to have to happen quite a few times because as I put in the bracketry for this uh, constant velocity joint and I have to make a huge plate, I have to measure it up, I do have a structural drawing for it but I don't have uh, it or where you know I haven't fully figured that bit out. So it's going to take a bit of time to, to move the engine each time and sort it out. So I'm going to build a scaffold a pyramid as such or a structure that can take both chain blocks at two different points on the engine. Um, so I'm going to time lapse that. I've started already and I'll finish it out on time lapse. Uh, the other little thing, I'll just turn the camera here back so I can see it. 
is that our block and tackle system has now been replaced over the weekend by Dara using a chain hoist 400 kg and it slides along and that believe it or not is an upturned bottom end of a toolbox used to weather shield it which is bolted in but he made this bracket to fit into the existing system that we had and uh, we did a great job and it works away fine and there's a little control box there for it that will control up the four motors so we have all the bits here and we can just connect it as we want so this is the start of what I'm doing below you can see I have extra pipes put in this one this is going to get very beefy we're dealing with one one point whatever tons so I'm going to build a whole little system there now that can take all the weight in the world and be easy to use and uh, be able to hold the engine uh, off the engine beds as I make space to make it all fit down there so we'll see how we get on running uh, I've built this whole structure cross braced it some heavy bars on the top uh, added a third leg and I have two one ton other cheapies that were bought in a supermarket funnily enough uh, but they've more than happily lifted their ton each and the engine is now 1.1 with the gearbox on so uh, absolutely no problem in shifting the engine forward used to be on the back of those runners and now it's up closer to where it needs to be now in the greater scheme of things if I zoom in here from this side you'll see there are little cut-ins that's one of them and that's another one and on the far side there's that one now the reason why those are there is because I lowered the engine down by moving it forward or backwards in the boat uh, in the plan that I have with the stern gear I can't have any part of the engine within 50 millimeters or two inches of the actual beds everything has to be only on the engine mounts and nothing can be any closer so for vibration purposes uh, it, it's never going to interfere with the, the actual boat so the gap that's back there is for the big long uh, intercooler and the one at the front here is for the pulley and bracketry associated with the second alternator which is down lower uh, and hooks in there so I cleared that one I did this years ago now, I did this when I was building the boat and this one here is to deal with the hydraulic piping going in and out for the PTO which will be bolted back in there again so since I've been away, I took four days off last week Today is Monday, I think it's the 13th of July 2020. So the boys have taken all the bits and pieces 
that we need to re-put back in onto the engine all the parts and even the tools to do so that were left in the back of the truck they're now all ready to go here for the engine rebuild once I have it placed it's pointless me confusing things and bulking out the engine for no reason uh, when I really only just need to be talking to the flange at the back of the gearbox so we leave it all empty for now take it all keep it all off and then down the road I can fit it all back up again and then hopefully within a week or two of that I'll have some fuel on board and we'll get some batteries and we'll give it a test start once I've cleared away for an exhaust so that all has to be done yet but uh, it's looking good I'm very happy I can lift the engine and move it around at will now maybe you know with another pair of hands with me we'd certainly be able to put it exactly where we want as we need to so this scaffold will stay in for the foreseeable future until the uh, engine is completely sit seated in its position uh, and all the stern gear lining up so I've temporarily floored over some of that so we'll get that up I've still got to big, build that big bearing bracket that'll be down there the reason why there's a quilt down there is when we lowered in the gearbox I didn't want it landing on the paint or getting chipped itself but as it happened we lowered it in and straight onto the back of the engine so that's it for now so here we have the test fit and you can see the height difference and the reason why that height difference is there between the two sides of the little line, the black, the middle joint there is because the engine mounts of course are at their maximum so they need to be lowered down but the adapter plate has fitted, fitted the gearbox perfect the CV joint has fitted in between the second adapter plate has worked out everything is bolted up not, tech, not tightened up fully as a locked eyes off but purely just as a test fit the whole truss bearing system is installed and this shaft is now connected technically albeit loose if the grips haven't been wound down and this guy is free the truss bearing is free to move so there's a huge big plate to be put there uh, i've just seen back there uh, there's a huge plate to be built into the floor now to mount that to. It'll be in 10 mil and it'll be reinforced and webbed into the uh, floor and the walls of the engine bay and everything. And we also have our uh, stern tube gland fitted on the inside, which the fiberglass fitting comes right up to and sits up against. So that's all working out. Uh, it's a, a very easy piece of kit to fit. Um, technically speaking, with the way I see it, I think the engine needs to come back about 140 millimeters. I haven't taken any measurements now. I've just been putting that thing together for the evening. And also I will have a slight incursion here because when I drop my 20 millimeters, that's going to be too close to the floor. So I will be taking a little chunk out of that just to give me a little bit of clearance. Uh, everything else, as you can see, is completely clear and by the time everything is bolted back on the engine it'll of course get much fatter uh we're used to seeing it so skinny at the moment so same on the other side at the back i'll just reach in here and you can see it in under the mount there uh there's going to be another incursion there uh so we can't have that so essentially as you can see the engine isn't even lined up it's off to on your right upper right that side of it needs to go left a little bit and straighten those two boys up but now i have the positioning of this i have a template made for it and it's just a case of drawing that up in cad getting the measurement of those six holes and then working that out into the the hull and test fitting a bit of steel and then clearing away the paint and seriously welding that into the floor and i'll hit the frame and onto the sides as well and probably onto the engine beds so it'll be very much beefed up with plenty of space to be still able to walk around it so that's the end of this episode and i hope you stay tuned and like and subscribe to our videos we really enjoy making them i'm actually recording this on my iphone so i can't swing it around to look at me but uh thank you for watching all our videos and take care we'll see you on the next one bye